Greetings my dear brothers and sisters in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has been speaking to the churches and for the past 6 weeks or 7 weeks we've been meditating on the book of Revelations and we saw the amazing history of the seven churches as according to Revelations chapter 2 and Revelations chapter 3 and then we are focusing on the church of Philadelphia. because my dear brothers and sisters laodicea is not going to be the church that is going to be taken up to heaven because jesus christ is standing outside the doors of laodicea and he's knocking on the doors but none of the church members inside the church of laodicea are able to open the doors and allow jesus christ into the church and that is where i'm telling you the doors are forever going to be locked in laodicea but the doors are only set wide open in the church of philadelphia and that is where in revelation chapter 3 and verse 8 you can see jesus christ is saying see i have set before you an open door and nobody can shut it hallelujah so my dear brothers and sisters we have to understand that the church which is laodicea is never going to open the doors and allow jesus christ inside but there is a church Philadelphia which is the sixth church this church has something in its possession which is able to make it open its doors and allow Jesus Christ into their churches and what is that that the church of loud Philadelphia has it in, has in its possession in revelation chapter 3 and verse 7 it clearly says this church has the key of david hallelujah yes this is very crucial for us my dear brothers and sisters we need to have the key of david and listen to the voice of jesus christ as in revelation 320 and you have to open the doors which are locked in laodicea you have to open the doors and when you open the doors you will come into the church of philadelphia hallelujah and what is this key of david this is exactly what we have been meditating for the past two weeks many biblical scholars and many documents which you can find in the world will teach you that this key is a key to the new jerusalem or is a key to the city of david or is a key given unto peter or is a key to the gates of the stronghold of zion many people even preach that it is a key of power and authority but not so because this key of david is the answer to a riddle started by jesus christ in matthew chapter 22 when the pharisees came and questioned him and jesus christ asked them what do you think about christ whose son is he and all the pharisees who had gathered around him they said this christ was going to come he is going to be the son of david Now Jesus Christ asked them a riddle a question after this because this is the key of David which Jesus Christ himself started this is the riddle of David which Jesus Christ himself started and the answer to this riddle should be the key of David and that is where in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 43 Jesus Christ is asking those Pharisees How then does David in the spirit call him Lord here Jesus Christ is pointing out to Psalm chapter 110 where David is saying the Lord said to my Lord though many biblical uh, translations have translated the second word to be a capital L it is not so in the Hebrew text it says Yahweh said to Ladonai Ladonai just means an earthly master So the Lord said to my Lord the second L should have been a small L. Anyway, we'll move on. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. So this is quoted from Psalm chapter 110. And then Jesus is asking the Pharisees a question. So if David is calling this Christ the Lord, how then can you call this lord the son of david hallelujah so jesus christ is asking if david is calling this messiah this christ who is to come as the lord has is god then how are you saying that this messiah that this christ who is going to come unto you will be called the son of david so when jesus asked this question they all went bonkers 
and they never dared to question Jesus Christ again and i'm telling you even this verse the psalm 110 has been a very puzzling verse for many jews even before jesus christ asked this uh, question because they never knew because they never had a revelation on how david a man in flesh could ascend to the right hand of god and sit there at the right hand of god it is not possible so many of the jews many of the early uh, israelites they never understood what it was even then it was a riddle unto them and after the question jesus christ asked them it became an even bigger riddle and i'm telling you my dear brothers and sisters this right hand of god and the likeness of david the son of david the begotten son and all those things that we meditated the last week and the likeness of the flesh which will be in the likeness of david are all the key of david that we have been given unto us to identify who is going to be that messiah who's going to be this jesus christ who will come into this world sadly 2000 years ago the israelites could not understand the key of david but today to the church of philadelphia jesus christ is bringing the key of david and jesus christ is telling the church of philadelphia if you have this key of david then you can open the closed doors in the church of laodicea and you can enter into the church of philadelphia because this is the church the philadelphia church is the church that is going to be taken up to heaven laodicea church is a poor blind miserable and naked church which the lord is saying i will vomit you out of my mouth hallelujah and that is where we started meditating on the key of david and the last two weeks we saw the seven manifestations of jesus christ in the old testament and especially the last two manifestations the servant and the son i'm telling you absolutely crucial for you to understand that this jesus christ is that father and if you do not believe that this jesus christ am he the father Jesus Christ is saying you will die in your sin sins meaning you will not have a proper remission for your sins because this is all going to tie up at the end towards the two baptism formulas found in the bible so i will be preaching on that probably the next week or the week after that but my dear brothers and sisters we have to understand the key of david that is given throughout the old testament and it's also being manifested and revealed unto the churches today to the church of philadelphia by jesus christ himself for us to understand that this jesus christ who was manifested in flesh is none other than god the father who was manifested in flesh this is the great mystery of godliness as written in 1 timothy 3:16 and after being manifested in flesh this flesh was exalted and made to seat at the right hand of god the right hand of god is a power glory and authority of god that is why david was promised in psalm chapter 2 verse 7 you are my son today i have begotten you There's only one begotten son John 3:16 says that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son so how can David become a begotten son But here the Lord God Yahweh is saying David today I have begotten you as my son Psalm 110:1 says sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool what is this right hand of God We have to understand all these crucial elements because this is the riddle that was initiated by Jesus Christ himself and to find the answer for this riddle is to come into the possession of the key of david hallelujah amen my dear brothers and sisters you have to understand there are many prophecies re- written regarding david in the old testament Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 23 to 24 says there will be one shepherd will be established over the Israelites who it will be the servant David and the Lord God is saying I will be their God and they shall be my people and my servant David will be a prince among them but remember this prophecy was written 200 years after David was dead and buried So whom can this prophecy intend to who whom is this prophecy pointing to 
none other than Jesus Christ this Jesus Christ will come as a servant in the likeness of David and this Jesus Christ will be a prince among men and they will and this Jesus Christ will be the shepherd and this Jesus Christ is none other than the father god who is in spirit manifested in flesh this is the mystery of godliness and that is where you see in jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 17 it is written david shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of israel david shall never lack a man meaning it, the man who's going to sit whoever is going to be seated on the throne of david is going to be seated forever so i'm asking you to look around look around modern day israel is there anybody sitting a seed of a seed of david sitting on the throne of israel no so who is it pointing out to it's pointing out to jesus christ this jesus christ will come in the likeness of david as a servant like david as a prince and a king like david and to understand that this father god the yahweh god the lord god of abraham isaac moses jacob the lord god of the israelites is that father god who will be manifested in flesh as jesus christ is to have in your possession the key of david hallelujah amen my dear brothers and sisters you have to understand that without this key of david we can never come out of the church of laodicea be really careful come into the church of philadelphia and today we are going to meditate how the overcomers in the church of laodicea will be linked to the key of david hallelujah yes last week i told you that we're going to meditate on this how will the overcomers in the church of laodicea will be linked to the key of david that is found in the church of philadelphia now firstly let us read the verse that is pertaining to the um, overcomers of laodicea the promise that is given in revelation chapter 3 and verse 21 to him who overcomes i'll grant to sit with me on my throne this is jesus christ speaking as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne hallelujah here jesus christ is promising i will grant you all my dear children i'm going to grant you all to come up to heaven and sit with me on my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne now you have to be very careful with the interpretation over here because if you're going to read it as per the text it's very clear that seems to be two thrones over here aren't they my throne which is the throne of jesus and his throne which probably refers to the throne of the father but i want you to be clearly aware before starting this meditation no two thrones were established in heaven revelation chapter 4 and verse 2 very clearly says that one throne was set in heaven and only one sat upon that throne and throughout the book of revelations you can read you will find that there is no other throne that can be found in the book of revelations apart from this one throne and the lamb of god the son of man who is sitting upon the throne So what does this my throne and his throne mean to the overcomers of the church of Laodicea because sometimes it just does not make sense does it and why do i say so because you have to carefully understand the text that is given here here it says i will grant to sit with me on his on my throne meaning the jesus Christ gonna invite millions and millions of people who are gonna be taken up to heaven and make them all sit on the throne of Jesus Christ side by side right next to Jesus Christ is there a possibility for that but even in our wildest imagination maybe that is not possible and that is not right as well because only Jesus Christ has to sit upon the throne So the second part of the verse where Jesus Christ says that he has overcome and he has sat 
with the father on the throne of the father now i'm asking you did jesus christ sit side by side to another person called the father who is the lord god yahweh or did jesus christ sit on a throne that was evacuated by the father god because if you have to really imagine that because if you have to take it as per the literature you will certainly be thrown off because these are not possible things and these are not rightful things as well so to completely understand this promise that is written to the church of laodicea we need to understand what this throne is i've already preached it in earlier sermons and last year i preached it in a series called laodicea if you have time listen to it i preached 3 weeks on the throne and it will be absolutely useful for you laodicea part 13 14 and 15 preached somewhere in july or august last year i mean so we need to understand what this throne is so i'm going to be brief about the throne today because now we all understand what a throne means a throne just means a glorious chair a high chair that has been decorated for a king or a prince or a ruler to sit on it it is a chair with a glorious appearance this is what we all know as a throne right now that is exactly what we also read in the old testament because daniel in uh chapter 7 and verse 9 he sees a throne he sees where all the thrones were put in place and the ancient of days were seated on the throne and then ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 26 ezekiel saw the throne where a likeness of a throne was there and the appearance of a man was high above the throne and then isaiah also saw the throne where he saw the lord sitting on the throne and not only that jesus christ is also promising to the disciples that in the regeneration when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory yes here jesus christ himself is saying that at one point of time the son of man which is me i will sit on a throne of glory so by understanding the text in all the passages and the verses that we read the throne is very much likely to be a glorious chair isn't it that is why david is also singing your throne is established from of old you are from everlasting in psalm chapter 93 and verse 2 Yes because this throne has been established from of old this throne is from everlasting to everlasting so the throne can never change this one throne that has been established where Daniel Ezekiel and Isaiah saw they were all the appearance of a glorious chair right but there are other verses as well in the bible that describes this throne as a different entity altogether hallelujah and firstly let us read the figurative uh, prophecy written in isaiah chapter 66 and verse 1 where the lord god yahweh is saying heaven is my throne you have to listen carefully now the lord god yahweh is saying heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool now although here the prophecy has been spoken in a figurative language the throne here is not declared as a chair is not declared as a seating place for god but this throne is declared as heaven itself heaven where god dwells and that's why you see there's also another verse declaring the same regarding the throne in jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 12 a glorious high throne is there from the beginning this high throne is the place of a sanctuary the throne here is not declared as a chair is declared as a place for a sanctuary a sanctuary means a dwelling place our house is a sanctuary the place where we live in is a sanctuary the country where you living here is your sanctuary So here the throne is declared to be a place of our sanctuary. This is the same throne that David is declaring in Psalm 45:6, "Your throne, O God, is forever and ever." So what can the description of this throne mean? So what is the sanctuary? 
what is this heaven is my throne so you can find the answer in jeremiah chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 firstly let's let's read verse 16 then it shall come to pass when you are all multiplied and increase it talks about the future in the land in those days that they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the lord they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the lord now remember my dear brothers and sisters the ark of the covenant of the lord was the throne of the lord to the old testament israelites and the moses this is the ark of the covenant where there will be two cherubims and the lord god will side in between the two cherubims in the mercy seat that mercy seat was the throne so this lord god yahweh will dwell between the two cherubims and sit on that mercy seat which is the throne and this ark of the covenant in totality was the throne of god but here in the prophecy regarding when where jeremiah is saying that there will come a day where the israelites will no longer say that the ark of the covenant of the lord they will not remember it it shall not come to their mind they will not visit it or it will not be made any more so what is this what is the jeremiah trying to imply over here and that is where we have to understand the next verse that we are going to read what has been declared as a throne of the lord will absolutely surprise you because in verse 17 jeremiah is boldly proclaiming at that time it is jerusalem that shall be called the throne of the lord hallelujah there will come a day when they will not remember the ark of the covenant anymore they will not remember it it will not come into their mind they will not make it again but now what has happened is the throne has become a different entity altogether and what is it jerusalem this jerusalem shall be called the throne of the lord hallelujah and what is this jerusalem it is the new jerusalem which you will find in revelation chapter 21 and revelation chapter 22 this is the sanctuary that has been promised for us This is a dwelling place this is where the lord is saying heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool this heaven is the new jerusalem hallelujah and to further prove this jesus christ himself in matthew chapter 5 verses 34 to 35 is saying and linking this heaven and jerusalem together where he's saying do not swear because you cannot swear neither by heaven for it is god's throne here jesus christ is saying you should not swear because you do not swear by the heaven for it is god's throne nor by earth for it is it is his footstool and then jesus christ is saying you shall not swear nor by jerusalem as well for it is the city of the great king hallelujah amen heaven and the new jerusalem are the same thing you will not swear by heaven nor earth nor heaven or jerusalem it's the same thing that the lord jesus christ is saying for this jerusalem is the city of the great thing, of the great king this jerusalem is the new jerusalem which is the heaven it is a sanctuary and that is exactly what jeremiah is saying this jerusalem in that day shall be called the throne of the lord hallelujah amen but the israelites did not understand it then they never understood what this jerusalem was they thought it was a physical city jerusalem but no jesus christ was not talking about a physical city there it is talking about the city of god the new jerusalem so if jerusalem and heaven are the same thing then god's throne and the city of god must also be the same thing which is the new jerusalem hallelujah god's throne and the city of god must be the same thing hallelujah that's where we need to understand the bible talks about this throne in two descriptions one as a throne a chair as we read that the 
visions that Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, they all saw, even John saw that as well. It is the descript of a chair, a glorious chair. But then there is another descript which is very crucial because that descript says that this throne is the heaven which is the new Jerusalem, is your sanctuary, which is the city of the Lord God. And this is the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you understand this term, the two descripts of heaven that are given in the Bible, then the promise that is written to the church of Laodicea will become all too clear for you to comprehend. Because remember, in Revelation chapter 4, which we, where uh, John saw, it is a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. It is only a chair. But when you read Revelation chapter 3, and you read the promise written to the church of Laodicea, I will grant to sit with me on my throne just like I overcame and sat down with my father on, the th on his throne, does not talk about a chair. It does not talk about a chair where millions or two or three people can sit on just one throne. No, it talks about Jerusalem, our sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Jeremiah. Because you read the second part of the verse 17 in Jeremiah chapter 3, it says, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. We saw that. And then it says, all the nations shall be gathered to it. Hallelujah. Meaning, you and me are also invited to sit upon this throne called Jerusalem. Meaning, we, need, we can dwell in this uh, new city of God called Jerusalem. Along with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the promise that was given to the church of Laodicea. I'll grant to sit with me on my throne. Meaning the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. I'll grant you all who have been faithful for my name. To come and dwell with me in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is exactly what is said over there. This is the exact same promise made to David as well because we're going to read two prophecies as well to confirm that this is the exact dwelling that Jesus Christ is promising to the church of Laodicea when he says, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne. Because the same prophecy was given to David as well in Psalm chapter 132 verse 11 to 12. The Lord has sworn in truth to David, this is a promise and a prophecy made to David that he will set upon the throne the fruit of the body of David. This is the tabernacle of David which we meditated last week. The seven manifestations of Jesus Christ. The fifth manifestation was the tabernacle of flesh. The tabernacle of David as written in Isaiah 16, 5. And then in verse 12... This is the prophecy that is getting fulfilled in Laodicea. Listen to this. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony which I shall teach them, then, listen to this, their sons shall also sit upon your throne forevermore. Hallelujah. Ditto. The promise that was given unto Laodicea where Jesus Christ promised that you and me can sit upon the throne of Jesus Christ. This is exactly that promise being prophesied. That we will also sit upon the throne of God forevermore. Not only that, another verse, another place where this prophecy is being fulfilled in the church of Laodicea. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 6 to 10. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. Hallelujah! You should be absolutely clear what Jesus Christ is promising to the church of Laodicea when he's saying, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne. Here Jesus Christ is making them inherit the throne of glory, which is the glorious city of Jerusalem. 
Hallelujah! This is the promise of Jesus Christ to grant unto us a throne which will be a sanctuary. That sanctuary is nothing else but the heaven which is the new Jerusalem, the city of our God. Hallelujah! Amen, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to understand this. Absolutely crucial. If you understand this, you will understand what is the truth behind the promise written to the church for the overcomers in the church of Laodicea. But even after all these meditation, a few may remain skeptical because they still might ask me a question. Brother, aren't there still two thrones over there according to Revelation chapter 3 verse 21? My throne and his throne, the throne of the Father. Now let me explain. We are now sure with all the verses that we meditated that there is a second explanation for the throne which is my throne which means the new Jerusalem. I mean, so you, won't, you shouldn't have any doubt in it. So we know that my throne, that is the throne of Jesus Christ now means the new Jerusalem. Now listen carefully. So according to this verse, because this throne does not talk about chairs, but only about kingdoms and dominion, therefore his throne, that the throne of the father, which you assume and refer to as the father's throne, is also not a physical chair. But this is also a dominion with Jesus Christ himself to complete control of. Hallelujah! This was a kingdom and dominion that was granted to the Son of Man, the flesh, the tabernacle of David, the Ark of the Covenant. This Jesus Christ who is flesh being inherited by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm telling you, this alone is a huge sermon by itself. But I'm just going to leave with you three verses for your understanding. I'm pretty sure many people who really seek the word of the Lord will have an understanding how this kingdom of the Father became the kingdom of the Son. And that is exactly what we read. All, all these verses are found in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1-3. Jesus Christ who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person is talking about the Lord God Yahweh and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. What Jesus Christ at the end sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Keep that in mind. What is his right hand of the majesty? Again in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1. We have a high priest who is Jesus Christ. Who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. This Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty. Means this Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand, right, not the right hand side. Right hand, I'm telling you, go read throughout the Bible. Right hand never means a position, left side or right side or front or back side. No, it does not talk about a position. Right hand talks only about the glory, power and authority of God. This Jesus Christ now is seated at the right hand at the throne of the majesty. Meaning this Jesus Christ has now assumed all the power and glory and authority of God. Meaning in this Lamb of God, the Spirit of God has inherited. This is the begotten Son. And again in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, we see that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. The big revelation there itself. This Jesus Christ is the author who started this uh, entire faith from the days of Abraham and this Jesus Christ is the one who is going to finish our faith as well. Anyway, we are not meditating that part right now. But here we see at the end it says, this Jesus Christ after enduring the cross and despising all the shame, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, meaning... Jesus Christ, 
has assumed the right hand of the majesty the right hand of the throne of god this right hand is the glory power and authority of god hallelujah regarding this right hand i will teach you next week the testimony by stephen we going to meditate on that next week so please tune in subscribe tune in and be tuned in for next week as well because these three verses i'm going to leave unto you to understand what it means by his throne the father's throne because jesus christ himself has assumed all the power glory and authority and sat down at the right hand of god but we saw in revelation chapter 4 only one throne is established not two thrones so join all the dots together you will understand that this flesh assumed all the glory and power and authority of god who is spirit and this flesh is now exalted as the lamb of god as the lord god the god who will be the king over the new city which is jerusalem hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters it's very crucial for us to understand this promise given to the church of laodicea i will grant to sit with me on my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throat so with the understanding that we have acquired so far i'm going to rephrase it just keep staring at this verse i'm going to rephrase it with the understanding and the revelation which we have received so far i'm saying revelation 3:21 is now reading to him who overcomes i will grant to dwell with me in the new jerusalem as i also overcame this world in flesh and sat down in my kingdom with all the glory power and authority which belongs to the throne of god which is my city which is the new jerusalem hallelujah the promise of the throne to the laodiceans is only given unto us as a place of dwelling it is a place of sanctuary this is the heaven of god i mean my dear brothers and sisters if you understand this promise then you will receive the key of david you can come into the church of philadelphia now this is where many of you will be curious because i said we're going to meditate on something today how will the overcomers in the church of laodicea be linked to the church of philadelphia these people are going to overcome the church of laodicea where does it say my brother that they will be linked and they will come into the church of philadelphia because strangely i'm telling you my dear brothers and sisters listen to this very carefully though this promise is written to the church of laodicea it is only getting fulfilled in the church of philadelphia because note the church of philadelphia if you read in revelation chapter 3 has nobody in the wrong all the churches the lord is pointing out certain people are doing these wrong things certain people are following these uh, doctrines of satan certain people are doing these things which i do not like which i abhor in every church there is warnings there are advices given by jesus christ but to the church of philadelphia nobody is in the wrong there are no warnings mentioned to this church of philadelphia there is no advice given to this church of philadelphia but the only thing that is written about this church of philadelphia are exaltations and praises for the church from the mouth of jesus christ himself amen yes you can read that so to a church my question is so to a church in which nobody is in the wrong there are no fallen believers there are no fallen uh, churches over there there is nobody wrong in this church of philadelphia so to a church where there is nothing wrong where nobody is in the wrong why then is there written a verse for the overcomers in the church of philadelphia in revelation chapter 3 verse 12 why is there a verse written for the overcomers why there is nothing to overcome in that church 
Nobody is in the wrong in the church. Everybody is perfect. This is the church that the Lord Jesus Christ is pleasing. He is finding it pleasing. So think about it. So, this overcoming is not written to the spiritual church of Philadelphia. It is written for the spiritual church of Laodicea. Hallelujah. Amen. That is where about seven weeks back, when I was speaking on the third part of this actual biblical history of the seven churches, I said the last two churches are not time-bound churches. These are two spiritual churches which will stand right next to each other on the day of the Lord. These are two parallel churches standing and existing together on the day of the Lord. Hallelujah! That is what I'm saying. This verse that is written for the church of Philadelphia for the, for the overcomer is not written to the church and the faithful in Philadelphia but rather it is written to the church of Laodicea. Hallelujah. And that is where let us read that um, the promise for the overcomer in the church of Philadelphia. This is amazing because absolutely amazing revelations. It's a treasure trove verse. Revelations chapter 3 verse 12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in my temple of my God and he shall go out no more. Meaning, the Lord is promising that you're going to be established as a pillar. So once you're established in the new Jerusalem as a pillar, it is a permanent residence for, for you. You're made into a pillar. If the Lord wants to remove you away, then remember, if a pillar is removed, what will happen? The house will have to come crashing down. So what the Lord is implying here is, you're a pillar in the temple of the Lord, meaning you are a permanent residence. You're a PR in the new Jerusalem and then the Lord is saying these are amazing revelations but I won't meditate on this this week next week or then week after that I'm certainly going to touch this and today I just want to touch one point in that but let's read that verse I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God, I will write on him my new name. Hallelujah! Understand my dear brothers and sisters, the promise given to the church of Laodicea, where we will be overcomers of this world and be granted to dwell on the throne of God, which is the new Jerusalem in the church of Philadelphia. The Lord Jesus Christ is promising, I will bring this new Jerusalem. It will come down out of heaven from my God. And this new Jerusalem is coming out of heaven just for you and me. Hallelujah. This new Jerusalem is the throne of God. This throne of God is coming out of heaven for you and me, not in the church of Laodicea, but only in the church of Philadelphia. This is exactly how it is linked. Those who are the overcomers of the church of Laodicea and understand what this throne is, that this throne is a sanctuary, it is a dwelling place, it is the place, it's called the heaven, it's a new Jerusalem. You will understand that in the church of Philadelphia, that is where we are promised that this new Jerusalem is going to come out of the heaven from Jesus Christ and it's going to come for you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amazing, isn't it, my brothers and sisters? This is exactly what the Lord wants you to understand. By what is meant by the throne. How to overcome it. How to sit on the throne of Jesus Christ. So how did Jesus Christ sit on the throne of the Father? He was in flesh in the world. And in the flesh, the Ark of the Covenant was taken up to heaven. And Jesus Christ is the Ark of the Covenant which John saw. John saw in the book of Revelation the Ark of the Covenant. He did not see a box. He did not see a box made with human hands. No place a box made with human hands can be in the kingdom of God. What John saw, the Ark of the Covenant, was Jesus Christ himself. This is Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of the Father and in that same throne, only one throne, we are asked to dwell with Jesus Christ 
in the new city of Jesus Christ which is the new Jerusalem hallelujah amen my dear brothers and sisters i'm telling you this is a key of david that you need to receive if you do not have this key of david you will never understand what is the city of the great king you will never understand what is the throne of the lord you will never understand what jerusalem is you will never understand what is the temple of god but if you understand it you will know that the new jerusalem which is the throne of god is only being manifested is only being revealed unto us in the church of philadelphia hallelujah amen my dear brothers and sisters amazing this is jesus christ speaking to the churches this is jesus christ revealing unto you the key of david this is jesus christ handing over to you in possession to your possession the key of david receive it understand who jesus christ is and next week we will or the week after that we will dwell on the promise that has been written to the church of philadelphia as well did jesus have a god above him did jesus have a god whose name was written on a foreheads then did jesus have a new name that will also be written on our foreheads so amazing revelations are in store for you this is not me i'm just an Earth, earthly vessel and not of any use at all absolutely i am just a man like you and me but i praise god that he has made use of this earthly vessel to proclaim the kingdom of god the kingdom of jesus christ the new jerusalem amen my lord we thank you for the day we thank you that you spoke to the church my jesus today let your children lord receive the revelation that came from you lord let them receive the revelation of the throne the new jerusalem the sanctuary that we are all yearning for lord lord we want to be in that sanctuary we want to be in the new jerusalem we want to sit with you on your throne and lord you are lifting us exalting us and my my lord we thank you that one day lord we will sit with you on your throne the new jerusalem and you will be the light you will be the glory and you will be our king and you lord jesus will be our lord our god and we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you for the amazing revelations that you have given unto us jesus thank you for speaking to the churches lord we pray that lord we will be prepared for the day of the lord remove all our iniquities remove all our sins remove all our uncertainties remove all our doubts help us to come to the knowledge of you lord jesus let us understand the mystery of god the mystery between the father and the son in which are hidden all the treasures and the wisdom and lord we come to the treasure of wisdom lord jesus lead us you are the voice shepherd speak unto us we the flock we listen we follow jesus mighty name i pray amen amen my dear brothers and sisters next week we will look into those two sermons that was preached by peter and stephen surprisingly those two sermons which peter and stephen preached are regarding the key of david amen so next week and the week after that where probably i will completely do a complete meditation on the church of philadelphia absolutely amazing prophecies and revelations that are waiting for us jesus christ is going to speak to the church let us welcome jesus christ in jesus name amen until next week bye bye god bless you all